Okay, so this all started out uh, when earlier this week, um, GN42, uh, you may know him from the leaderboards of the Pauper. He's also got a YouTube channel, which I'll link below. Um, he posted that he trophied with uh, Dust to Dust Bully, which is an old classic that we used to meme about back in the day when Affinity was running rampant and you could run uh, main deck Artifact Hate in a bully shell because there was a lot of like discard outlets to get rid of them and <laughs> he played against the four decks with artifact lands and i'm like oh yeah and i'm and in the league that i played bully or went 4-1 i'm just like yeah i can see how this did well uh so i decided to register up for the challenge boris pyrus Pyr uh, boris pyroblasts so um yeah I, dust to dust when you're seeing a lot of the um blue white metal craft it's been in leagues a lot but in challenges it doesn't pop up as much but there's still a lot of mono blue and blue black terror so i thought well why not hit that affinity matchup the blue white one in particular and also try and hit the terror ones as well so that's why i decided to main deck four pyroblast uh, GN's list only ran 19 lands, four of which were Ash Barons, which seems <laughs> very, uh, lean. I usually have issues with lands at the best of times, so I'm running a full 20. I used to run 22, but I've knocked it down a couple. Uh, a couple of cycling lands for the garrisons when you're starting to flood out. Uh, and that's all you really need. Otherwise, we've got, uh, the looting and thrilling discovery package, which... Uh, allows you to run these pyroblasts and be able to like get rid of them to convert them into new cards in matchups where you don't need them. Um, and then the rest of it's just your standard bully fair, uh, Lunark veteran. Um, GM was running Sacred Cat, which I find very mediocre. Like it's it's fine with Rally the Peasants, but otherwise it just doesn't really do much. At least Lunark veteran can just sit there and gain you like four life off a of battle screech. That's pretty sweet. Um, we've got Thraven Inspector. We've got Interaction in Lightning Bolt and Journey to Nowhere. Quad Squadron Hawk, which is like the best draw engine White has. Prismatic Strands, because we're running Discard, so we might as well run things with Flashback. So that's what... Well, and the, the winning combination of Battle Screech plus Rally of the Peasants. That's pretty much how we close out every game. Uh, my last video uh a lot of people told me that with the amount of um and the festivities and uh suffocating fumes around that Ramosian rally was like an auto include so i've decided to put in one could go up to two could have one in the board unsure and uh, my old deck ran four secret of the way it's fine but your main win condition is these so you don't really need secret of the way but it's a nice i just wanted another creature to be able to sort of uh, put some pressure on while you're sort of churning through your deck and trying to get to this win condition. Uh, <laughs> sideboard is, uh, so we have the Artifact Hate package of two Gorilla Shaman for Dust to Dust. We have another Pyroblast in case we verse the blue decks. Uh, Trickery for Elves, Fairies, uh, Crimson Acolyte for the red matchups, oh, and pr Prismatic Strands, but it's also for like Hexproof and any monocolored aggro deck. Uh, and Patrician Scorn for Hexproof and Heroic. So that's the deck. Uh, we did pretty well. So I ended up in the top eight. So it's fairly... So you'll see a decent amount of wins. Um, I I didn't record at the time, but a couple of people asked me to see. It's like, oh, am I going to do a replay of the challenge? So I decided to do the GN42 method. If you watch his channel, you'll know. So I've recorded my replays and I'm just going to replay them and pause when i see anything that's worth talking about uh so yeah let's let's see how we go okay so uh these replays go a little fast at some point so i might have to pause to reiterate some things but uh otherwise uh, so this is round one versus biko de Gaia. and they were on um mono blue terror as you will soon see I have to mulligan the first hand because I have no lands. Uh, keep an alright six. They turn one Delver, so I have to play the red. Play the tap land so I can um, try and bolt it. 
I try not to bolt straight away. I wait until they cast something so I know they can only counter it with spell pierce, not the counter spell. And they just start digging. And they manage to drop a terror on turn three. So now I've got to draw a squadron hawk, which is like the worst possible draw. So I'm trying to find some lands at this point. So I discard a squadron hawk and a faithless looting. Still don't find a land, which isn't great. Uh, and this turn is not good for me, because <laughs> they dropped two more terrors. So, uh, I can kill one with the main deck Pyroblast, which is nice. Uh, but they, yeah, managed to get a Delver down. They've only got one card left in hand, so I think, well, maybe I can just start, like, plonking down some creatures, gaining some life, and chumping all these 5-5s. Five fives. Uh, but they manage to have the last card in their hand as a counter spell, so I lose my Squadron Hawk, so I can't draw two more cards. Uh, they don't flip the Delver, which means it can't be instant or sorcery. I have to block at least one, so I choose to block with the Thraven Inspector, so now I can cast the Battle Screech, gain four, flash it back, gain another four, get a free attacking because they're not going to block with the Delver. Still no flips. I choose not to block at all, going to one, because if I draw like a, um, what do you call it off the top, a uh, rally, I'd rather try to like keep as many birds as I can. Managed to draw a Pyroblast to get rid of their uh, Cryptic Serpent. They attack with everything. I trade off with the Delver and chump the other two. Uh, make a mistake here. So we've got one card left in hand, so I decide to just rely on the strands to be able to keep me alive. It, except, well, they, they revealed a counter spell off the Delva, so I knew they had a counter spell. I did not know what the second card in hand was. So what I should have done is cast the strands in the upkeep, but to make sure that I wouldn't get hit by a second counter spell. Well, yeah, which is what happened. So I could have tapped the Luminous Phantom. Oh, I could have cast the Prismatic Strands, would have counter spell, would have tapped, and then I wouldn't have taken any damage that turn. And then I had like another draw step and I had a clue there. So mistake on my part, but we pick it back up in game two. Okay, so uh, round two, keep a reasonable seven. Uh, play a tap land to start, because I need to be able to cast Lightning Bolt if I need to next turn. Uh, which I do, so that's handy. Can't have Spell Pierce up with no one tap lands. Play a second Delver, I can't really do much about that. So I just play a Lunark Veteran and play the Squadron Hawk this time to make sure I can draw the three Squadron Hawks instead of it getting countered. I had no spells, so Seeker of the Way wasn't going to really be doing too much. So they reveal of Thought Scour. They mill it away. Take the three. Play another Delver. It's the third one of the game. So I cast Veteran into Squadron Hawk, knowing that they can't counter anything. So they reveal a counter spell off that Delver. I trade off with two Hawks. And they don't play anything else, which is interesting. So they just use the counter spell that they revealed. So I just double Seeker, knowing that they can't counter the second one. And they double Cryptic Serpent. <laughs> so, the ground's all clogged up. Well, I, I, rip a, I rip a Journey to Nowhere off the top, so that gets rid of one of them. But I can't attack him with the Seeker of the Way or the one one, so I've got to go to the skies. But thanks to the Lunark Veterans, I've been gaining a bucket load of life. So I don't really, like, I didn't need to block there. But I chose to. So they play a Murmuring Mystic, which is not great for me, because if they chain draw spells, that just makes all my, like, creatures irrelevant. But <laughs> they draw a second one. So I've got the Rally, so I decide to see what they choose to block with the Seeker. So they trade off the Delver. So now I've still got three Flyers and a Rally in my hand, or in the graveyard. So, so I'll pause here. So, uh, I decide to attack first. 
because if they've got one card left in hand. So if it's a spell, they'll be able to get two birds and block all my stuff. So, and if they have a counter spell, I don't want to like cast a Pyroblast to get rid of like a Murmuring Mystic to start off with, because then they'll just get two birds. So if I don't cast anything, they will not be able to block unless they have, uh, yeah, like an instant speed draw spell or something. So I decide to attack in, and then when it hits, an once I get into declare blockers, that's when I cast the Rally of the Peasants, which is when they concede, because they obviously didn't have anything. So on to game three. Uh, keep an okay seven. Probably too many lands, but I've got one drop into Squadron Hawk, so that draws me a pile of cards. They have a turn one Delver, which manages to flip because they have a Brainstorm. So now I've got to try to kill that thing. So I just play a Squadron Hawk. I only get two because I don't want to discard... Oh, no, I get all three because I want to discard the Prismatic Strands, which is fair. <laughs> and they mill the cards that they don't want. They just saw off the Brainstorm. So now it's just a... Now it's just a clock, so I assume they're going to have a, a counter spell. So I'll just play a Squadron Hawk, attack in, keep up the Pyro, or the Red Elemental Blast in this case. Expecting to... Uh, didn't want to kill the Delver in case they had a counter spell. So at this point I need to keep Mana open. Well, I wanted to use the Red Mana at the end, so... Now I'm free to do whatever I want, because they don't have any land untapped. So I'm looting to try to find something, which I find a Battle Screech and Rally the Peasants, which is great. That's what we need to win. Attack with just one Squadron Hawk. So I will trade off, which they choose not to attack with the Delver. And they just cast Deep Analysis into Terra. So... At this point, like, I need to... I'm at 11, so I need to try to block at least one of these terrors next turn. Uh, but they've tapped out. So I've got two strands in the graveyard too. So obvious play here is just to battle Screech, cast and flashback, and then hope that I draw... Because I've got my fifth land. Hope to draw a sixth land to be able to, like, rally twice. And that should be able to kill them. So they, they paid three life with for the deep analysis, which makes it even better, because now only one Rally the Peasants <coughs> Rally the Peasants needs to resolve. Well, actually, how many birds did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times three is twenty-one. They can block one that's eighteen. So it didn't really matter. But they might have had like a snap or something, so. So Choose to block. <laughs> so it's always nice to block just in case if they counter, because you don't want them to like have like double counter spell and then you just die. So that's why we block there. All right. So we'll, so we flash back Blue Knight Veteran, cast the Seeker of the Way. Uh, so why didn't I attempt to rally that turn? Is the question. I think I wanted... I was too scared of a counter spell. I think what I wanted was that... Uh, sixth land. To be able to try to... Cast them both in the same turn. So... So I just... Cast... Guys that can just chump for a couple of turns. And it gives me a... Draw off the clue token. And also, I may not have to rely on the rally if I can. So, attack with this amount specifically to be able to like block the two delvers and the cryptic serpents, like in case they have one bounce spell. Now they're down to nine, and like yeah, one rally should still kill them. Delver doesn't flip, which means they drew a land or a creature. Oh, which they um, milled it away with the mental note. 
chump one, take five, play two more serpents. So now they can only have counter spell. So I attack with all these. Try a rally. Why not? See if it gets me there. Uh, but they have a snap to be able to live. So that means they actually go to three. So I probably should have attacked with... Well, probably should attack with more, but... Like, just in case of something like that happened, like double snap even, then I may not have had enough blockers to deal with all these cryptic serpents. Uh, but they're only on three and they got no more flies and they cannot counter the protonic strands, so I win that one. All right, so this is round two versus Dante guy. Uh, they end up being on uh, proliferate or poison storm or whatever you like to call it. So I have no idea what they're on at this point. I keep this, it's fine, it's got two lands. I can thrilling discovery away. <laughs> I draw a second squadron hawk, which is never great. I see the peat bog, which means I know that they're on... Um, Poison Storm. They hit the turn 2 Poison, which isn't great. I would have liked to be able to Pyroblast that, but that's what I get for running Forgotten Cave. So at this point, I find the land, which is great. So I just need to be aggressive, because they don't really have that much interaction. So you just need to play what you can, uh, and try to beat them down as quickly as possible before they um, poison you out. So... They're doing a pretty good job at this point. So they've set up, they've got a pile of, um, like, mana. They're, they're short, double blue at this point, which is noticeable. So the the main draw... Yeah. So play Squadron Hawk just to get the Hawks out of my deck so I can try to start drawing some lands and put pressure on the board. Discard the Rally because I don't think I'm going to have to cast it more than once. Uh, they play a Prism and a Contentious Plan. Uh, and his... So, before, they only had one blue source. So, I um, didn't worry too much. But the main thing with Poison Storm is that they rely probably a little too much on their draw threes. So, they run um, Lorien Revealed and Vivisection's Insight. Vivisurgeon's Insight? Something along those lines. So, they're both five mana draw threes. So, if you can counter these, then they may just run out of gas. So, this is why I was holding up Pyroblast the entire time. Because they cast a Lorien Revealed. So, I just jam jam the Pyroblast. So, now they've only got two cards left in hand. And I'm at three poison. So, now I've got... <laughs> and, and they weren't on expecting uh, main deck counter spells, obviously. So, now that that's gone... We can battle Screech, flash it back, attack for four, and then we have, what, uh, one, two, have four, five, six, seven, seven power in play, and they'll be on 13. So we can flash back, so flashing back Rally will kill them, uh, but they managed to hit a couple of draw spells, and they also... Like, Augury, flash everything up, or proliferate everything up, and then uh, Weather the Storm to go back up to 23. Except uh, the Lightning Bolt actually gets us the win here. So we Lightning Bolt, we Rally, that gives us uh, 24 damage, and we're able to kill them. Which is pretty sweet. So we're into game two. Uh, this is okay. We've got looting to help get rid of all these lands. I would have preferred a um, pyroblast of some description. <laughs> we we draw into two more lands, which isn't great. Probably should have discarded a land, but I discarded the Lunark veteran because I can flash it back, which is what I do this turn. Find a pyroblast. So I'm going to keep that for a uh, draw three if I ever see one. So I'll probably just keep up mana. So this is, uh, this is also a problem with some of these hands, is that I've just got no pressure. All I am is attacking with a 1-1, one, one, and uh, Poison Storm just thrives off being able to do whatever they want. If you give them time, they'll just dig and dig, and slowly you will just die. 
So I'm already at four poison. It's only turn four. But I find the Battle Screech, which is pretty good. So at that point, like, like I'd always try to hold up Pyroblast for a um, counter to counter one of those draw threes. Except at this point, I have no pressure, so there's no point in me holding up a Pyroblast. I'm better off just playing the Battle Screech and flashing it back to be able to have some sort of clock to be able to actually kill them. I play a Chalice, which sort of <laughs> makes me a little bit happy because this Dust to Dust might actually have a target. Except they hit, like, three proliferates in a row. And a virulent wound, which is great. Makes my clock a little bit slower and gives me a poison counter. So I'm only four poison away, which means I could die this or next turn. Find a Squadron Hawk. Choose not to cast it. Because it doesn't help increase the clock and I've got to keep up Pyroblast for the draw five. So they muddle for a moment's peace, which means they buy themselves two more turns. Now I'm at seven poison. Uh, I, I chose not to counter the Contentious Plan, because uh, Contentious Plan is the worst of all the blue spells, because uh, it just draws a random card. If you like, tier list of countering spells, you'd want, like, Vivisurgeon's Insight, uh then Lorien Revealed, then Experimental Augury, then the one that gives you a poison counter, oh, well, then Contentious Plan, and then uh, Prologue to Phoresis. But, I mean, if you don't have a poison counter, you obviously count a Prologue to Phoresis, because that first poison counter can always be a problem. Oh, so they got Weather the Storm and um, Moments Peace, so... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've lost this because, I mean, three more turns, they can still... I'm sure they can find two more poison. I just do whatever I can. Still holding up Pyroblast. There's the fog. And then I assume I die this turn. There's the Vivisurgeon's Insight, so we hit it with the Pyro. But it doesn't matter because they got a second one anyway. <laughs> and so we scoop it up. And then we have to try to beat him in the third one. Okay, so here's what I sideboard for the proliferate matchup. So I side out uh, Journey to Nowhere's because they have no creatures and Prismatic Strange because they do no damage. And I bring in uh, two, so three Dust to Dust and the one red Elemental Blast. Uh, Dust to Dust, because they run, like, Pentad Prism is a pretty good Storm Enabler, so you want to try to cut off the Pentad Prism. Uh, you need two targets, though, so you'll probably hit an Everflowing Chalice, but, yeah, always aim for Pentad Prism. Uh, nothing else is useful in this matchup. Like, Gorilla Shaman, I could probably bring in instead of Dust to Dust, because it at least beats down, but uh, Dust to Dust is just more minor efficient. All right, so under game three. Uh, Squadron Hawk plus two Pyroblasts. Uh, this is what we want. This gives us, like, some amount of pressure, like, a, a steady amount of things to be able to play. Uh, I, I choose not to hold up Pyroblasts because they have not, they did not play an island, did not play a blue source, so the probability of them playing a blue spell was very low. So I just slammed the Squadron Hawk. I only got two, so I didn't have to discard anything because I was going to play a next one next turn anyway, which will draw me the fourth one. So now we've got reliable attackers, and we've got three counter spells. So we'll counter the Augury, because uh, all their lands only had like one depletion counter left on them. So I thought uh, it might like give them a little bit of a hard time if they don't have any more like non-blue proliferate spells. So there's a second Augury, we'll counter that one. But then they got a third, and I wasn't game enough to counter this one because I was too scared of a draw three. And then they hit the fourth one anyway. <laughs> so there's all four Expendable Auguries in two turns. And they get the poison counter anyway by killing a Squadron Hawk. So they've got two random cards left in hand. Uh, I'm on two poison. 
and I've got a, a, a medium-ish clock. So, Battle Screech, I hit the I hit the untapped land, so that let me be able to cast some flashback to Battle Screech while holding up Pyro. There's Chalice, there's the 5 drop draw spell, so we'll counter that. Now they're down to one card left in hand. So now we just put down as much power as we can. Oh, well, well, like pseudo uh, holding up a pyroblast because playing the extra squadron hawk doesn't actually um because <laughs> playing the extra squadron hawk doesn't actually increase the clock so we may as well hold up like make them think that we might have another pyroblast to make them make a different decision in which they cast an infectious inquiry it's probably the only thing they had which makes them lose two life. So now they're actually dead on board to like exactly what we've got because we've got eight power left in play. So rather convenient. Uh, yeah, drew three power blasts, but I mean, they drew four experimental auguries. So uh, we take these wins where we can. That was a pretty fun one. Okay, uh, welcome to round three against Luffy du Chapu de Palha. Uh, they will be on some sort of version of Affinity. They've been on the blue, white, and high progressive one for the past couple of challenges, but they usually always played Grix's Affinity, so I expected some sort of form of artifact lands. Uh, I keep this hand. It's pretty good. It's got just a way to dig. Well, too many ways to dig, and a Squadron Hawk for card draw. Uh, so, yeah, they mulligan to six and see a Dross Forge Bridge, so they're obviously on Grixis Affinity this time. Uh, and they're doing Grixis Affinity things like playing Ica Wellspring. Uh, so I just slam a Seeker of the way, because it's, it's it's just the most aggressive at everything. Like, I've only... Squadron Hawk could draw me, what, two cards? Oh, yeah, two cards. So... I may as well just play the Seeker, because I'm probably going to Thrilling Discovery next turn, because all I've got is a pile of, like, draw and discard. And I'll draw another land, so instead of just playing a random 1-1, one, one, I'm going to play a Thrilling Discovery, discarding the Faithless Looting, because it has flashback, so it's the easiest thing to discard. Uh, and a land, I believe. Yeah, because I was getting too many lands at that point. Then play the garrison to go back up to seven cards. Alright, so they play Gear Seeker Serpent, which I managed to, uh, which isn't that fantastic when I don't have, like, chump blockers. I've, I've got, like, I can Squadron Hawk all day, but thankfully I draw a journey to nowhere. In which I find this very strange, so they decide to reckon as bargain the Ica Wellspring. I, I guess they just didn't have much in hand, and they really wanted that, like, extra card draw. Because now you're just going to be sacrificing a land if you, like, need to sacrifice something else in the future. And also gains you 7 life, which isn't nothing, especially against this deck that tries to kill you with burn spells. So now I can finally play the Squadron Hawk. Get two Hawks. I don't want to discard anything, so I'm not going to get the third. Just cross our fingers and hope to not draw it. So yeah, they play a Mirror Enforcer, that's fine, that's what Affinity does, at least it wasn't two or three of them, and we'll get that last Squadron Hawk, so I don't draw it, as I play it. Yeah, so they really must have had nothing when they um, reckon as bargained that Ica Wellspring, because they just reckon as bargain a land. <laughs> So we're at 24, so we can take a hit from the Mirror Enforcer. And the goal is just to beat them down in the air. So the only thing they, like... Well, <laughs> we're going to on a Kenku. So the only things that I need to worry about, really, is Kenku. Because now I can't really attack in, because I'm going to be losing a bird every time. Uh, and makeshift munitions, because it can just shoot down all my birds. Uh, but here I draw exactly what I need, which is Rally the Peasants. So this is so we've got we've got the one two game plan of Battle Screech plus Rally the Peasants, right? So I, I see the line of being able to win here, which is just 
playing Battle Screech, flashing, well, and a Squadron Hawk, flashing it back. So now we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that eight birds. Uh, and we got the rally. So eight times three is uh, 24 minus one, because one will get blocked by the Dross Forge Bridge, and that's exactly 21. So if they've got a removal spell, then I've still got a lightning bolt to be able to kill them, or I can just flash back the rally because I've got six mana. Uh, choose not to block anything there, mainly because I have that lethal board position, and also because they played a blood fountain. I don't want to block the Kenku to be for them to just bring it back and then have another unblockable wall in the air. Okay, so I cast rally pre-combat to see if it'll resolve which it does, so that means I'm just going to swing with everything. Because I'd rather not, like, attack with everything, it gets countered, and then I have to choose if I want to, like, flash it back, or, yeah, or I'm only going to do, like, a minimal amount of damage and I might get killed on the crackback. So knowing that I've got this result, uh, it has resolved. Now I can attack with everything. They block one, so they got to kill one, which they do, so they go to three. So I play a three of an inspector to be able to block the mirror enforcer, if they decide to attack. Uh, yeah, and I choose not to uh, flash back the rally just in case they have a counter spell because I'd rather not like leave myself open. They may be able to kill me because I'll just be completely tapped out uh, at 15 and they've got, what, eight power in play. So if they've got double Gal Blast, I might be dead. Uh, so, and here is where they, so they sacrifice, so they sacrifice the Mirror Enforcer to a Reckoner's Bargain to try to gain seven. Uh, and because it's an easy way to bring back with the Blood Fountain. Uh, so here's, here's the moment of truth. It's like, they've got three mana technically. They can improvise if they've got the, um, Metallic Rebuke. So I'm just like, well, we've got to try to kill him now. So that's, and that's why we held the lightning bolt the entire time in case something like that happened. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, so on to game two. So game two, uh, we have, we have the nuts, so to speak. So we've got dust to dust and a way to cast it on turn three. That's really all you need. So here I make, so here's an interesting sort of mind game you can run. So I probably made like a little bit of a play mistake here. So I like, I see a, a planes and a Thraben Inspector. I want to cast that turn one, right? So that's cool. But the real mind game play would have been to play the Windscar Crag uh, because I'm always going to be playing the Boris Garrison on turn two, right? So I play the Windscar Crag, turn two, uh, tap it, play the Thraben Inspector, play the Boris Garrison. So now they know I've got the Windscar Crag in hand. But, so, like, if I have a Dust to Dust, I may not be able to cast it. So they may, like, tap out. And you might be able to just get them. But I played my hand early, so now they know I've got, like, Dust to Dust mana on turn three. So they might, like, hold up and envelop or whatever they... Or turn aside is probably the more common one. Uh, but they mustn't have much because they just decide to tap out and Echo Wellspring into Thought Cast. So, I'll take the opportunity when I can to kill two lands. Especially if it cuts them off two colors of mana. So, we just dusted us away the two artifact lands. Beat in. And they fail to draw a land. So, at that point, we just try and increase the clock. So, we just play in flashback of Battle Screech. Play Chromatic Star. Uh, but, yeah, this game doesn't last much longer. Because I play and try and flashback a Battle Screech to make sure they will lose in like two more turns, but they just scoop it up. So yeah, dust to dust wins games. That's just, that's why you run Boros is if you see a lot of artifact land, it's got the best artifact hate in the game. So nice, easy 2-0, uh, on to round four. All right. So uh, on to round four against Oscar Franco, friend of the channel. Uh, so, they usually run uh, some sort of blue deck. So, I know Pyroblast is going to be good against him. Like, the last two times they've I've seen him play, they've been playing blue-black Terror. So, that's what I thought they'd be on. 
So uh, when I mulliganed, I decided to not put away the Pyroblast. Because usually it would if you don't know. But I had like an 80% chance I knew they'd be on blue, so that's why I kept it. And lo and behold, there's an island. So, uh, plan pretty slow. I don't really have much of an option. So, I'm scared of Counterspell, so I will not cast a Seeker away. I will wait until I have Pyroblast up. <laughs> and they just do nothing for three turns, which is very strange for a Terror deck. Well, it could not be Terror, but it ends up being Mono Blue Terror. Don't tell anyone. Uh, so, at that point, I feel like I need to put the pressure on, and they've done nothing all, like, for three turns, so I'm like, well, I'll see if this Inspector resolves, it does, and I'm just like, just slam the Seeker to see if it also resolves, which it does, so, now we're in a pretty prime position, we have actual threats on the board, so we're looting, because we have, like, two relatively, think like, decent things we can get rid of, and even Thrilling Discovery, plus we just want to try to, um, like, get some more damage in while the Seeker's in play. Uh, hit a Squadron Hawk, which is great. So I'm definitely discarding the Rally of the Peasants. I think I discard Thrilling Discovery, because I'm happy enough with everything else, but yeah. Which is what I do. We attack in. Uh, I decide to keep up Pyroblast. So I've got Pyroblast plus a Clue Crack if I need it. They just play Delver. They still only cast one spell in five turns, so... I don't know what's going on with this deck. Uh, it may have just drawn very poorly. It must just have, like, all terrors or something. I don't really know. So, I'll take the opportunity to try to kill this Delver. Uh, I have Spell Pierce Mana up. If they've got a counter spell, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just attack in next turn. Which they don't. It just dies. <laughs> so, we just, we'll just play in Flashback of Battle Screech. Which we can't because the spell pierce happens. So they must have had the spell pierce the entire time. But I've just been playing around it. So a little sad that that didn't resolve. Like I probably should have played like Lunark into Squadron Hawk holding up Pyroblast. But whatever. So so now we hit Murmuring Mystic. Uh, so it's really lucky that I draw the second Pyroblast here. Because this card is very painful to flare our deck. Because we have to try to win with 1-1 Flyers, right? Well, if they, anything they cast becomes a 1-1 one, one flyer, then how am I supposed to win? So we've got to get rid of this thing as quickly as we can. Uh, they do have the counter spell, but it doesn't matter because I've got the double counter spell. Uh, doesn't really matter what I targeted there. I counted, I, target, uh, I counted the target. I counted the counter spell, but I could have just easily have targeted the Murmuring Mystic again. So now they've got a bird. But now I also have a bird, which draws me three cards. So get in. They go to seven. And now they can actually dump the serpents that have been stuck in their hand the entire game. So now I can just, like, cast a Lunark veteran. So I'm... S yeah, I didn't... Like, I could have cast Battle Screech there. But I decided to just, uh, like, avoid the spell pierces and whatnot and try to gain, like... Oh, I didn't really need to gain life. I'm already at 32. <laughs> Maybe Battle Screech was the option there. But I'd rather, like, hold up pretending I've got Pyroblasts. Okay, maybe I don't. Maybe I just cast a pile of... I guess it was the most mana efficient... No, it really isn't. I don't know. I probably should have just played Battle Screech. Uh, actually, Battle Screech does get countered by Spell Pierce at that point, so let's just say I was playing around Spell Pierce. Alright, so I attack him with the Squadron Hawk to trade off the bird. Uh, they've only got two cards left in hand, so I'm feeling pretty safe. And I've got four birds in play, so. Like, I should be able to kill them in a couple of turns. I've, got, I've gained so much life that these terrors aren't really that scary to me at this point. <laughs> the Murmuring Mystic, on the other hand, is very scary. <laughs> so I need to try to get, like, around that as quickly as possible. 
Oh, except for the fact that I've got a rally in my graveyard that I've forgotten about until just now. Uh, I, I knew about it the entire time when I was playing, but I forgot about it while I was doing this commentary. So, um, yeah, I could just try and cast that, see if it resolves, and if it does, then I just win. Uh, and then I cast a journey to <laughs> try to get rid of the bird. All right, so that's game one. Uh, okay, so here's how I sideboarded for game two. Uh, so I've taken out a uh, Ramosian Rally and a Faithful Suiting, and I've put in a Prismatic Strands and the fifth Pyroblast, the Red Elemental Blast. Because Rally doesn't do too much. Like, it can help push through a little bit of damage, and looting's a bit... It's It's fine. You don't really need to loot that much in... Like, maybe this should have been a... Thrilling Discovery instead, taken out, because at least it has, you can flash it back. <laughs> okay, so game two, uh, I, I do I do the hands a little slowly in this one, because I mulligan down to four, because uh, we have a one lander to a no lander, uh, to a one lander, to a see this this hand's pretty good so we've got so we get rid of two of the lands and the prismatic strands and then we've got like three minor a squadron hawk and a battle screech which is pretty good for a multi four I even get a one drop which is nice So I'm not holding on Pyroblast at this point. Or Pyroblast. And they get stuck at two lands. So I didn't want to... <laughs> squadron Hawk. I'm down to three cards. I needed to protect my Squadron Hawk. So I decided to just play the Lunark Veteran to be able to like cast Squadron Hawk and hold up Pyroblast, which ends up not being needed. But that's great, because now I get to draw three cards. And now it looks like I never mulliganed at all. And I get a free attack in because I'm never going to block one of these with a Delver of Secrets. Uh, Delver doesn't flip, and they don't play a land. So that tells me that they just hit a creature, <laughs> which is pretty funny. So we attack with everything. She's not to block. And then I get to play a Veteran into a Squadron Hawk. Just gain a palm more life. Counter Squadron Hawk, that's fine. Still doesn't flip. S still no plate, la no land, so they must have drawn that Delver just then. Tag with everything. No blocks, down to 10, with just all these 1-1s. One Counter my Faithless Looting, so then a Thrilling Discovery instead. Getting rid of Battle Screech and Squadron Hawk. Rip two rallies and a Prismatic Strands, <laughs> which would have been nice earlier. <laughs> Now they got to start chipping in, but they got to hold one back because they're so low on life. Flashback the battle screech, gain a bucket load of life back. Uh, flashback the faithless looting. Try to get rid of some of these cards in my hand. Uh, choose not to pyro that because it, look, the cards in hand are fine. Um, I'm better off trying to save it for like countering uh, a counter spell on my rally. Like something that's actually going to kill them. I choose not to attack at all. Play a journey. I counter it. I don't really care. <laughs> because I'm just going to kill one of their delvers and attack in. So now they're down to five. I've got five creatures. So, and they tap out, so now I can just rally and they die. Easy. On a Mulder 4, no less. Okay, so this is round 5 versus 4 Sturf. So we're currently 4 0, which is pretty good. Uh, they're usually on some sort of Jeskai Ephemerate, so I thought Iroblast would be good against them. <laughs> but then they start off like this. <laughs> so they're obviously on some sort of Koldotha variant. 
Uh, so I gotta play the Forgotten Cave first in case they play a, um, what do you call it? Monastery Swift Spear, so I can kill it with a bolt. But they don't, they play a Rebirth instead, which is probably the worst option for us. So I gotta dig to try to find something relevant. Uh, discarding a land in a Ramosian Rally. Uh, find another bolt in the Journey to Nowhere. So I've got all the spot removal for all these silly 1-1s. One at least the experimental synthesizer <laughs> revealed a fire blast so they never got any value off it. So, play a Squadron Hawk. And that'll probably just bolt a token. So now I can at least trade off with another token and try to stop the damage. But I get blasted out of midair. Great damage. So, I assume I am not too long for this world. Right, down to eight. I got two cards left in hand. So we kill the samurai token, and now we've got a blocker. So we just got to hope that they don't have the burn to kill us. Because I am pretty low. Uh, but as with most burn decks, uh, I mean they've always got it right. Look at that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was nice and quick. So, on to game two. Uh, here's the sideboard. Uh, so, we take out all the Pyroblasts, obviously, and we bring in the two Crimson Acolyte, uh, the two Prismatic Strands. And we took out a Rallying of Faithless Looting for... What? I can't remember. <laughs> I need to remember what my sideboard is. But anyway, we draw the Crimson Acolyte. So that's pretty good. It gives us a way to defend ourselves. So now I can start chipping in. And they haven't done anything for two turns, which is pretty weird for a burn deck. So Synth reveals a Swiss Spear, so that's obviously going to come down. I've got the Lightning Bolt for it anyway, so we'll just kill it now. Uh, choose not to Battle Screech, because I want to keep up the Prismatic Strands, because I don't want to get blown out by a... Um, in the festivities. So they hit a land off the... Synthesizer. So we kill the token. Get in for one. Draw a card. Cycle the Forgotten Cave, because I don't really need another. I'd, if I want anything, I want white to be able to use the Crimson Acolyte's ability. So, so, pause here. <laughs> so they attack in with the Epicure, which, I mean, I've got protection from red, so this is like an obvious block, all right? Uh, so it's it's fairly obvious that they've got, um, oh, what's it called? Flaring Pain, because Flaring Pain stops the protection's prevention ability. So I'll block this, they cast Flaring Pain, and then they trade. So I'm not going to fall for that, so why choose not to block? Uh, so, I tried to Galvanic Blast me, and I wanted the Prismatic Strands in my yard anyway to be able to, like, keep it there, to be able to cast Battle Screech. So, and there's the obvious Flaring Pain, so at least I didn't lose my Acolyte. Still take four. <laughs> and then, it still dies anyway because of the end of festivities. So now that the end of festivities have been played, now I can flashback my Battle Screech. because the likelihood of them having another one is not high. So now they get to attack with a pile of creatures. I will trade off, because I'm on the... I don't have a rally. If I had a rally, I'd keep... I'd keep my creatures around to be able to try to just do more damage, but I'm behind, and I don't have a rally, so I've got to trade off. But I get a Lunark Veteran, which is pretty nice. So that'll make the 
Battle Screech next turn pretty good. Uh, I believe they're not going to attack him with the Goblin Tokens because I've got a 1-2. They don't, and they don't do anything. So that's pretty good. Uh, choose not to play the Battle Screech because I think I can get the most value out of... Like, they're not pressuring me, so I'd rather try to get, like, 8 life off the Battle Screech rather than just casting it there. And you never know, they might um, end the festivities, and then at least I've got a way to come back from that. But they've obviously got nothing, because they keep, like, playing and cracking whatever they get. Or well, they've got, like, a couple of burn spells in hand. That they're just waiting until they get enough to be able to blast me. So now's the time. Now's the time to cast Battle Screech. They got double Lunark Veteran, uh, and then they so they were holding a pile of burn spells. So <laughs> they don't want me to gain eight. So they decide to waste six points of burn to stop that from happening. But they do tap out. So that gives me the opportunity to cast the Prismatic Strands, and they can't flash back the Blaring Pain, which is pretty good. So this gets, gains me four creatures and four life. Which is going to be hard for them to come back from. Unless they hit an end festivities, obviously. So we just got to hope that doesn't happen. May as well try to chip in for one, because I've got exactly six flyers now. So I should be able to um, kill them in two swings if they don't have anything. which they've got far more creatures. So yeah, choose not to trade any of the bird tokens because I can't kill them in two swings. Good, we, we draw a Squadron Hawk, which is pretty great. So now we've got an extra couple of flyers. If we need them. And we gain two life back up to 12. Attack with all the birds to get him down to six. And at this point, we just hope they don't have an end of festivities. I block what I can in case they have a pile of burn spells, but it doesn't matter because they scoop them up after I block. So, win game two. Under game three. Okay, so reasonable hand. Land, early Thraven Inspector. Like, doesn't seem too bad. Not really many threats, but we've got the lootings to dig to them. Yeah, we've got a Lunak Veteran now. So we'll play that. In case they don't kill it, then I gain an extra life from playing the Inspector next turn. But it dies straight away. So the next turn's pretty obvious. Uh, don't hit a land, which is pretty handy for us. So I just <laughs> feeling discovery to try to like hit some relevant cards. Discard the two lootings, I believe. Oh no, I had too many lands, so I discarded a land and a looting. Draw three lands and a lightning bolt, which isn't great. So yeah, now they're going wide. So at this point, I've just drawn another land, and there's not really much I have here. So I think I just... Oh yeah, I've got to... I've got to try to dig more. I can't just Battle Screech, because I'm just dead to a... Um, end the festivities if they do have it. So we've got to try to dig more. Uh, we draw two more lands, which is exactly what we didn't want to see. So we just uh, flash back our creature. And then hold up a Lightning Bolt. And there's the end of festivities, so at least I didn't cast the Battle Screech. Uh, and they kill both my creatures, so now I've, now I've pretty much got a Battle Screech. Because I'm going to be taking like four a turn. 
Ah, but I draw a prismatic strands, so now I can, like, waste a turn to prevent that damage. So they decide to blast me out of the sky for eight before I can do anything about it. So now I'm down to seven. And I'm going to have uh, two one ones next turn. But I've got, like, these plus a prismatic strain, so, like, I'm not completely out of the woods just yet. But my life total is not looking great. And there's a swift spear. So, at this point, I have to use the prismatic strands. Like, at least they don't have... They don't have two mana up, so they can't have blaring pain. And I get to kill two one ones off. And stop three damage. Alright, so... It's only discovery, because I've got too many lands as is. So I'll discard the land the Rally the Peasants, I assume. And then we draw, like, everything we need now. So now we got... There's a Crimson Acolyte to stop the Swift Spear. And a Squadron Hawk to draw some cards. But I decide to, um... So here's where I make an error. So I decide to play the Throbin Inspector and hold up uh, the protection from the Crimson Acolyte. Uh, and now I'm going to flash back the Battle Screech. So I make an error in that I tap the Crimson Acolyte, uh, because you will see what will happen next turn. <laughs> I should have tapped the Throbin Inspector. So this was from the previous game where the um, the flaring pain into in the festivities like showed that like Crimson Acolyte is not the best blocker. The Thraben Inspector is the better blocker. Which is why I trim the tap the Crimson Acolyte there. But now I now I get um so in the festivities, so I try and protect uh the eight bird token. But it gets lava darted. So now I'm just down to one blocker, which also gets lava darted because they had another mountain that they drew that turn. And then, yeah, they can bolt me and kill me. So if I kept the Acolyte up, they wouldn't have been able to get in with the Swift Spear. And then I might have had a little bit more of a chance. Like, I could have, like, replayed a Battle Screech next turn, have more blockers. Like, I would have been on, like, four, and they had two blood tokens, but at least I still would have been in it. A bit rough, but, hey, I was, I was 4-0 until this point, so... We just need to win one more, and then I can make top eight. Or I could even lose it, depending on breakers. All right, round six versus Pepe team. Uh, I had no idea what they would be on. Get this hand. A little bit clunky, because all the tap lands can't play the Throb Inspector on curve. The island was nice, because I had the uh, Empire Blast in hand, so I'm like, oh, so at least I'll be able to use it. Uh, so they're on the blue-white... Affinity deck. So I've just got to like hold up Lightning Bolt whenever I can to try to kill whatever they're trying to put the all the glitters onto. So yeah, uh, they have barely any interactions. So uh, Secret of the Way is a pretty good card here. So <laughs> uh, try to cast a Thought Cast here. So, blue spell, may as well try and get rid of it. And now they can't attack any either for the turn, which is pretty good. Uh, I choose to cycle the Forgotten Cave instead of playing it, because I really need a second white source at this point. And I wanted to use the red mana, and I didn't want to, like, use the Lightning Bolt, because I needed to, like, use it as the response to a all the glitters if it did happen. Second thought cast, Mazel Pirate Blasted, had three of them. Still got one left now. Relic's a little annoying. Get rid of my rally that I discarded earlier. So now I'm going to start trying to put some pressure on because 
<laughs> I know the rally's gonna go, so I might as well use it, right? And keep up the one red for either another blue spell or the lightning bolt. So, <laughs> another blue spell. This one's gonna hurt the most, because using Pyroblast on draw threes is great. So we hit three in one game, which is pretty funny. So things are looking pretty up for us here. So we just draw a couple of cards that turn. So they dump a pile of cards. After another thought cast. So I counted two, and they still managed to draw a third. I can't really tack in with the Seeker now, because there's a Mirror Enforcer in the road. And they managed to... And there's another blue spell. So they used to counter my Squadron Hawk, which I didn't have the three anyway, so... Couldn't have really played that differently, which is a little annoying because now I can't really attack in. So there's there's an all that glitters, which is the thing we're worried about. So that's what we're bolting, and he gets rid of it. So that's great. That's the we we held that up the entire game, and it finally happened. So now we just play a little bit of a staring contest for a while. They keep chipping in with the Ginger Brute. Uh, I'm doing another Faceless Looting, so I'm going to Thrilling Discovery them both away. And then I... Got to keep a... Like... <laughs> the Squadron Hawk is tempting, but you need to keep up the Lightning Bolt in case they get that all that glitters. Because then that Ginger Brute is just going to kill you. I'll let it keep chipping in, though. So yeah, so now we can... Veteran into Squadron Hawk. Gain a couple of life. And then just let the Ginger Brute keep chipping in. So another Squadron Hawk. Which now lets us actually start attacking in. So they all that glitters. So obviously I'm going to try to lightning bolt it. But they've held on to this counter spell for so long. That they've managed to let this resolve. So that's not great. So yeah, now they attack in for 11. So I can at least survive another hit. Which is nice. But I need to try to find something that can actually help me win the game. So that's why I just dig. Find Battle Screech. Find two lots of Battle Screeches. So I discard them both to be able to... Um, flashback both to be able to get a pile of birds into play. To try and do some damage. So I should attack with the two Squadron Hawks. I attack with everything. So I gained some life. I'm up to 28. Uh, they managed to find the third, all the glitters. So I'm thankful I managed to play all those birds, because otherwise I'd actually be dead. So <laughs> I, I so let's let's I'll probably pause this on the wrong flame and I can't move this away. So um they've got two flying blockers. I have what one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, they've got four blockers, and I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that means seven of my things can go through. So literally all I need is a burn spell, and I win, right? Or a rally. So we Thrilling Discovery, we get rid of two lands, and we draw three lands. <laughs> so... I still need to find that Lightning Bolt to help me win, so I flashback a Faithless Looting. Uh, gets me a strands and a journey, which doesn't help because I don't have the one mana left over that I need to be able to journey away one defender. I just attack with everything to see if they maybe don't math it right and don't block with one creature. But now they block everything and they go to one. And I just scoop. <laughs> So, the Pyroblasts were good. They uh, did what they needed to. 
I counted three things, but it still wasn't enough. They just found three of the all the glitters in the top 23 cards of their library. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is how I sideboarded. So I've taken out a Lunark Veteran, two Journeys, uh, the f two Strands, and a Rally. And I put in all the Artifact Hate and the other Pyroblast. So Artifact Hate is five cards plus the Pyroblast is six. And I've taken out one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably should have been a Thrilling Discovery, but I, I sort of plus or minus the... Thrilling Discovery or Faceless Looting. Could be either. But the Lunak Veteran doesn't really do much in this, like, the the one life. It does help a little bit. I'd rather just keep the looting effects. So, this, this hand, it's got a Pyroblast, it's got a Faceless Looting. Like, it's, it's keepable. You've got a Faceless Looting and a Forgotten Cave to cycle, so... And we've got two interaction pieces, so... I'll definitely keep this. So we we find we find a dust to dust, which is what we're after, uh, and a white source. It's just we need to try to find another white source now. Uh, discard a rally and the land. So like next turn we can. So we'll hold up either of the red re removal spells, and then I can Raven Inspector and hold up red interaction again. They must have mulliganed to five because they've got almost no cards in hand. So the Pyroblast is going to be great against a Mold of Five. They do nothing turn two. So I decide to kill off the Thornathopter. <laughs> draw another red source. Yep, they <laughs> find a draw card spell, so I counter it straight away. Find the land. I find the white source to be able to dust it us, so goodbye two lands. And now I just need to try to find some pressure. which I do not find at this point in time. I should not have probably played that land because there was a Faithless Looting. Find another Thraven Inspector, so at least I've got... At least my clock is now doubled. The Dust to Dust is also pretty handy because, hey, they've got two artifacts. Uh, but I decide to uh, just play the Gorilla Shaman because it can kill the Springleaf Drum. And then if they play, any, if they play another land, then I'll kill both of them and then... They're pretty much gone, but they scoop when they see the Gorilla Shaman, so... On to game three. So, game three, uh, reasonable hand, two lands, interaction pieces. That's all we need. No dust to dust, which is a little sad. Well, no artifact hate, but we draw into it, so everything's hunky-dory. Uh, just need another untapped land to be able to actually cast it. If not a fourth land, it'd be nice to be able to, like, Pyroblast if they have a counter spell. So, I've got to keep up the Lightning Bolt here in case they have a Glitters. But I... They were relatively low on cards, and I've got the Dust to Dust, so I thought I may as well try and counter this Thought Cast instead of, like, holding up Lightning Bolt and killing whatever they try to Glitter onto. Which pays off, because they don't have the Glitter anyway. But they do draw their two cards. So, uh, Rip of Faithless Looting, which I have to cast because I haven't hit a land. Um, which is good, because I actually hit a land. Shame that I can't actually hold up um, Lightning Bolt anymore. Or play the Gorilla Shaman. So, we just play the land and play the Seeker. Oh, we f flashback the Lunark. Instead, which, I mean, they've got a relic, so we may as well <laughs> get things out of the graveyard while we can, right? <laughs> so, uh, didn't have the Pyroblast, so they reverse engineer, and they cast one of them already. So they've dumped, like, four cards onto the table that turn. A little rough for me, but I get a Gorilla Shaman, so I kill two of their lands. And I've got the dust to dust for the mirror enforcer. So 
Do they attack with what they can? I just let it through. Oh, I trade off. Because I'm sick of the flyer. And it's the scariest thing to have a Dust of Dust on. So now they tap out, which is handy to know that they don't have a counter spell. So now I could just Dust of Dust getting rid of the two biggest creatures they've got. And I hold up um, Gorilla Shaman for a clue token. So you don't do it now because they can just crack it in response. So at the end of their turn, they try and crack one. So in response, I kill the other one. So that cut them off a card. And they play a Frog Might, play another Springleaf Drum. I think they cracked a Relic in the meantime there as well, which is a little bit annoying because that got rid of like a pile of graveyard stuff for us. But hey, we've still got Gorilla Shaman in play. And now I get to play a Seeker, which will pretty much log jam any creature that they decide to play. But now, the, now we're back on the Ginger Brute chip-in tactics. But I've got the double lightning bolt in case they're drawing all the glitters. I'll just let the Ginger Brute keep hitting in. And I'll just, yeah, chip away at the Springleaf drums when I have. But I draw a Squadron Hawk, which lets me draw three cards. So that lets me... So now I don't need to keep the land for the Thrilling Discovery, because I can actually start casting some things. So now I've still got double bolt up. Hit me in for another one. So they're going to keep hitting me in for one at this point, but now I've got two. So I've drawn another land. Uh, decided instead of playing the two Squadron Hawks, I want to actually try to find some good cards. And I get the Seeker to um, get an activation too. So I'm going to discard the land and a Squadron Hawk. Get two more lands. Which is a little annoying. Get an inspector to be able to block. Get a squadron hawk. So now I attack in with everything I can. They decide to kill the seeker, which doesn't work because I have the bolt to get rid of one of their creatures. They gain a decent amount of life in the process. Uh, but they must just have a pile of lands and they scoop. So uh, we win that off the back of Dust to Dust, which is pretty nice. So 5 1, we get into top 8. So that's pretty feels nice to be able to get a top 8 after so long. Uh, and then we will play the top 8 game. Alright, so we hit top 8, and then we're playing against Ezo Crado. Uh, i got no idea what they're going to be on. Uh, it's, it's hand's pretty rocky. <laughs> it's got it's got a dual land and a faithless loading. And I'm on the play. I decided to keep it. I don't know why, to be honest. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have. But... It, I'm just hoping the Faithless Looting gets me out of it. So I, I get to draw like three cards. So I see the Paducah Bog and I'm scared because this means it's probably like Black Gardens. And that matchup is absolutely abysmal. So, <laughs> but at least I get, at least it's not going to exile my Faithless Looting anymore because they played it on turn one. I draw a land, which is great, but I'm still looting. And we get rid of way of looting at Battle Screech because I might be able to cast it later. Uh, but they hit a second Paducah Bog. So there goes all my flashback spells. Makes me really sad. I'll play Squadron Hawk. Just so I don't have to draw any more Squadron Hawks. And it's less likely to get Edict. Like a Seeker would. So now I get to play a Seeker. Play an Inspector. Play a Secluded Step. They draw some cards. I get in. Visionary. So there are eight cards. They have to discard one. Uh, play a Squadron Hawk. Uh, kill the Visionary. They sack it. Draw two cards. Gain three life. And kill my <laughs> Seeker. It's the net minus one. Uh, net minus one. From that whole ordeal, but then they have three black cards in their graveyard, so they get to Spinning Darkness as well. So, uh, now they're pretty much back at 20, and I've only got three cards in hand. Which is a little rough. Get to play another Visionary. At least I know they don't have the mana 
to be able to sack it this time. So I journey it away, tank in for three. They get to fungal infection, the squadron hawk. So I get to only tank in for two. And they kill both my creatures. And get rid of my graveyard. So they've pretty much swept away all my creatures just using only spot removal. They didn't even need to um, <laughs> hit a crypt rat. So <laughs> find a pyroblast, discard it, draw another one anyway. <laughs> it's the problem with pyroblasts and not blue matchups. Is that they always come at the most op opportune times. So I get another discard spell. We get rid of that pyroblast out of here. Along with the land, because we don't need it anymore. Play a couple more creatures. Chipping in the air. We keep the Forgotten Cave, because we don't need any more lands at this point. And so, they get a land, and then they get to bring all the creatures back. So then they get to draw another card. And then they make me discard my entire hand. So... I probably should have, like, used the Lightning Bolt, maybe. But, I mean, this is... I've never seen this in a green-black Gardens deck, and it seems alright against the more mid rangey decks when you're drawing a pile of lands. So we crack a clue, we draw another lands, then we can flash back the looting. Now I've got two Battle Screeches, which will probably get discarded to the Raven's Crime, but at least I can cast them from the graveyard. My problem is I can't really attack because of the stupid 2-2. Two -two. So they draw three more cards. <laughs> Make me discard one. So I'm feeling okay because now I've got... It's just like... Well, they've gone through half the deck. They haven't shown a Crypt Rats yet. So maybe they're only running like two. And I might have a chance if I... Like flash back these two Battle Screeches and have a pile of creatures in play. With a rally in the graveyard. And I'm like, this, this is the chance and i got to take it. Uh, but it all just comes crashing down. Because the Crypt Rat comes and kills my entire team. And they draw two cards out of it. <laughs> so, I just scoop them up. And I hope to do better in the next one. Well, I hope they don't have as... I wouldn't even say it was good luck, really. So, uh, here's how we sideboard. So, uh, I just take out the Pyroblasts and I bring in what I can, which is the two Prismatic Strands and two Dust to Dust. Because I run Artifact Lands and Echo Wellsprings, so nothing else really does anything. So, Dust to Dust is fine. Uh... Keep this. This is much less riskier than the first hand, because at least we got a <laughs> second mana source. The double squadron hawk sucks, but I'd rather not mulligan to six. It's sort of like a mulligan to six anyway, and this is de decently reasonable. So we take both the squadron hawks, make them think like we still have one in the deck. Relic's annoying. So squadron hawk, we won't we won't get the we won't get the last one that's hidden in our deck because we've got this Boris Garrison. So we're looting. Uh, so we're looting, and then so we discard the veteran because we can cast it straight away because I got this relic. So I didn't really want to put Battle Screech or anything else in the graveyard at this point. And Remosian Rally helps us against Crypt Rats, so I wanted to keep it in. I just need another planes to make it work. I kill the Lunark Veteran, which, well, the flip side of it, I guess because they're expecting to sweep, so they don't really want me to gain life. Seems strange not to, like, kill one of the ones that's actually doing your damage. So, here's, here's interesting. So they sack the relic to draw two cards. Uh, and they don't get a land. <laughs> so, 
I'm like, yes. And I draw the planes. So I'm like, okay, this is great. So even if they have Crip Rats, they can't kill my team. So I'm just going to play the Battle Screech, flash it back, make a pile of creatures to be able to like whack in. And if they die, then I still got a couple of Squadron Hawks to try to like chip in and do the rest, right? Uh, it doesn't end up that way, as you will soon see. So I do what I can. Uh, and then, <laughs> instead of Crip Rats, <laughs> they play a Drowned Sorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Remote Sin Rally does not save you from Drowned Sorrow. So, uh, all that power just disappears. And they hit a Bounce Land too. So now they're up to 5 mana. And I draw a land. So, just play 2 Squadron Hawks. And pass the turn. And then they've got another Sweeper. So, we draw a Prismatic Strains, which, I mean, isn't great against Crip Rats. <laughs> because they activate it once and then they just do it again. But, it's better than nothing. So I could have um, used the Dust to Dust on their two lands the turn before, but I wanted to keep up strands just in case. They wanted to try to, like, tap out for a um, five drop and then try to ping for one. So, now that I've got not much else, I decide to dust to dust, and it doesn't really go that great because they just sack one, draw two cards, and then sack the other, and draw two cards. So, so, there's still, a, like, five mana sources. Uh, so, I don't really need... Like, the journeys aren't really doing anything. So, we'll cast the Seeker. And we'll try and... So, I've got the Remosian Rally, so I might be able to bait them into, like, doing the Crypt Rats for two. And then I can rally to keep the Seeker alive. And maybe that'll be able to push through some damage. Well, they're stuck on mana sources. The bog really hurt me here. Because oh, I've only got a Faceless Looting. Oh, Faceless Looting and Strands. So I'm like, well... <laughs> See, what you should, what I should have done there is... What you'd think you'd do is cast the Strands on black. So then, like, the Seeker gets a trigger and then they can't Crip Rats you. But then they'd, like, Crip Rats for two and kill you. So the tech players assuming that you can't do anything, and then they Crip Rats for two. So now I can tap, remote in Rally, so it'll kill the Crip Rats, they took two damage. So, I don't... I think they might have thought it was a Prismatic Strands or something, because they decide to do one extra damage, which doesn't do anything, because the Prowess Trigger and the plus one plus one from the Rally makes it four, so it doesn't actually die. Which is pretty handy. Rip an Inspector, draw a land, which isn't great. I guess they go into eight. Another Crypt Rats. So my board is dead. But now we draw a Lightning Bolt. So we're actually not too far off. Because they're probably going to Crypt Rats for two, go down to six. I can Lightning Bolt them to get into three. So all I need to do is try to rip another Lightning Bolt. And we should be fine. Well, now they're down to seven. So my... I still need them to Crypt Rats for one to be able to have this, like, Lightning Bolt option. So, play the Lunark Veteran. Uh, they played an Edict, so they're probably just going to, like, flash it back, which is what they do. So, uh, we have... So, I decide to, while the coast is clear, cast a Journey to get rid of the Crypt Rats, and then... Flashback this Luminous Phantom. So then I should be able to, like... I doubt they're going to try to kill a 1-1. One, one, and then I'll be able to, like, Battle Screech and flash it back next turn. But it dies. And they drop an Avenging Hunter. So now the clock is on. So now I've really got to do something. So I cast Battle Screech. And I make a mistake here. Where I play the land... In which I'm not entirely sure why I do this. Because I guess I want to keep Rally up. 
which seems strange because it's not really going to do anything. I'm, only, I'm never going to use it on the defense. I'm only ever going to use it on the attack. Because, yeah, so they're going to hit me for seven. I'm not going to block because I'm going to try to hit them on the... hit them with the rally next turn, which isn't going to do anything because they drew a crit rats. So, yeah, take the seven. Uh, and this is <laughs> this is where the mistake comes in. So now I draw a Thuring Discovery, and I want to keep this Lightning Bolt, right? But I'm pretty much dead next turn, because they're going to go Trap into a Trample Avenging Hunter. So I really need... So I sh what I needed was to not play the land, so then I can discard the Rally and the land, I draw three fresh cards, hopefully find that second Bolt to be able to kill them because they're going to crit rats now go to six so i've got nothing else i have to thrilling discovery to be able to try to find something to be able to live right so just got two cards make the bolt go away don't find another bolt but i find a prismatic strands which does help me like last one more turn so i'll i'll cast the lunark veteran and then pass it dies straight away. So I go to five. So I strands to stay alive. And then I gotta to try to find something with this face of suiting. So I draw the bolt. I draw the second bolt I need to be able to kill them off that. Yeah. So uh, flashback the phantom to be able to try and flashback the prismatic strands. I don't want to cast the place the looting because that means I'm probably going to discard the lightning bolt, which I don't want to do. But they have the last card in hand is a uh, snuff out to be able to kill the phantom. So I can't flashback. And then I just concede. So, uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. This is a tough matchup, which I'm surprised I even got this close, to be honest. So, yeah, I uh, hope that was informative and enjoyable, a little bit different than what I'm used to. Um, deck's pretty cool. Like, this, <laughs> this deck's pretty fun. Like, you can, if I shuffle things around... So I think like these, these are all your flex slots. So pretty much all of this I feel is like mandatory. So you can do whatever you like with these and just make this as to what you will. So you can take out like the power blasts of like the easiest plus or minus thing. You can try to like put in dust to dust if you think that's better can put in one like one electricery you can add another secret of the way just it's or put in some like relics if you play against a lot of graveyard decks it's pretty fun i'm really happy with how the deck functioned uh if you expect a lot of sweepers crypt rats and whatnot <laughs> don't play the deck <laughs> but yeah um against anything else if you find the right like package to insert this deck can have a good time so hope you enjoyed um we'll go back to our regular content later or probably in the next video <laughs>